feature today with Dr. Asan Arari, who is a strategic and terrorist consultant, terrorism consultant, uh, practicing out of uh, uh, Alexandria, Virginia, and we have him on the phone by a Skype hookup. And we're going to talk today about uh, Egypt or Syria, which is more troubling? How do you like that question, Asan? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's, it's uh, uh, Egypt is troubling for a long time, is likely to be troubling for a long time. Syria uh, seems to be troubling right now, but depending upon what President Obama decides, and if he goes uh, after the Syrian regime uh, on the basis of limited attack, uh, then probably things are not going to be any better or worse. Then the fight will not be over because uh, the Syrian government with with uh, diminished capabilities or, or uh, reduced capabilities will still be in power because that's not our intent. Our intent is not to uh, bring about regime change in Syria because regime, uh, regime change Syria means who is going to be in charge of that country. It's a very complicated country. It's a very explosive country. It is right next door to Israel. And Israel is very jittery uh, right now in terms of what happens uh, once the United States, it is no longer if, it's once the United States attacks uh, Syria. Egypt, on the contrary, is a simmering conflict. Uh, the most unpredictable part of that is which which way is going to turn, how violent it will become, or Egypt will become another Algeria, whereby military machines are, will continue to kill people and remain in power. So well, in this that is sense, all terribly problems. troubling. You know, yes, it uh, is. a year ago, two years ago, we were talking about Arab Spring. We were talking about a new a new um, democracy in that whole region. We we're talking about. Uh, coming out, you know, and being a world players of some respect with, with our admiration for, you know, the, their progress. Now we're, we're in the dregs. Now we're in the dark period over there in both countries. Let's take one at a time. Let, let's take Syria because Syria has been in the news so much. So uh, a year ago, or maybe not, maybe six months ago, um, the president said that if, uh, if, uh, if chemical weapons were used uh, by the government against the rebels in Syria, uh, that he would he would take strong action, and now uh, they clearly have been used. There is really no issue that they have been used against civilians. Uh, a thousand, fifteen hundred people have been affected. Uh, many have died uh, in a in a very brutal, uh, inhumane way, um, and clearly by chemical weapons. And the president is talking about uh, sending missiles in from ships. Uh, offshore, some miles and miles away. Uh, he's not talking about invading from the ground. And for that matter, he wasn't talking about uh, drones either, just missiles from, from a distance. Um, so A, what, what do you think he has in mind right now? And B, is it going to get him any points with those people who relied on his earlier statements? Uh, well, uh, I think the United States will use cruise missiles uh, the United States might use some, some bombers to destroy uh, Syrian air forces, it, it's uh, air, uh, airports, uh, but you know, I don't know what kind of uh, uh, air defense system, Russian installed air defense system, how capable it is, and whether they, there's going to be any, any U.S. casualties. Uh, in my estimation, the chances of any U.S. US casualties uh, are, are quite slim. But the question is, if the Syrian regime's uh, capability to survive is reduced, how reduced would it be before we say, okay, that's acceptable? Because the United States certainly does not want uh, Bashar al-Assad to be out. Israel certainly does not want Bashar al-Assad to be out because the opposition is largely very anti-American. Uh, and Al-Qaeda is very much there. We don't know how many uh, fighters are there. We don't know how, I mean, we, don't, we know that they're capable because uh, they have been very, very consistently uh, being, being victorious against, against uh, Syrian uh, military. But the question is, what if Al-Qaeda type of groups get an, get an upper hand uh, and not the pro-U.S. groups? Even, pro, even the loyalty of pro-U.S. groups is, is highly questionable in my mind. So President Obama is really faced with a dilemma. Uh, he has to go and attack, take some, some sort of military action uh, against Syria because, as you pointed out, he has uh, clearly warned that if you use chemical weapons, that's crossing the red line. 
Now, yes, the, the, the use of chemical weapons is, is quite evident. I think there the, the, the are a lot of uh, proofs that, that uh, chemical weapons have been used. But the question is, who used them? See, whether the, those weapons were stolen and used by the insurgents to, uh, to provoke the United States, or the regime has, has, has used them. From my point of view, I have, I have, I'm very hesitant to think that Bashar Assad you know, has used it because he knows he's not crazy. He's a very rational man. He's a very ruthless man, very rational man. And every ru ruthless and rational man knows uh, that, the, that the bottom line for him and for his regime is to survive. So he's not going to do anything to to uh, antagonize the United States. But at this point, there's this there's, there's so much noise. There's so much support. Uh, supposedly globally, and there's so much reluctance on the part of U.S. Congress, and rightly so, and within the United States, there's no clear-cut clear, clear cut consensus. In fact, the public opinion is against American environment. So, you know, th all we have right now are a whole bunch of questions and, and uh, not very many answers. The only thing which looks clear to me right now is that in all, in all possibility, the United States is going to attack, take some sort of limited military action against Syria. Do you think it'll be limited to the missiles? Or will it go beyond that? Oh, I think missiles and probably uh, some uh, minimum uh, use of uh, airplanes to, to bomb uh, and, and, and deteriorate, deteriorate uh, Syrian uh, air capabilities. Uh, maybe limited, limited attacks on Syrian forces, on uh, its, uh, its tanks, on uh, you know, uh, its, its bases, uh, you know, anything to diminish uh, serious, serious military capabilities. Well, let me let me uh, ask you this. Um, you know, they, their air force was destroyed a few years ago, and they rebuilt it using Russian help. And now, supposedly, uh, Syria uh, has a very sophisticated air defense system. Um, and some of these steps that you outline require, you know, that we fly over them. Uh, and if we fly over them, they've said they are going to resist that. And so we'll have a we'll have a serious air war, won't we? Well, I'm not sure about about how capable the Syrian air force is, because United States air force air force's supremacy in the air is uncontested. You know, we have seen uh, against Iraq, we have seen in Kosovo. So uh, I'm not I'm not uh, uh, I don't have any confusion about uh, United States air force suffering uh, you know much. Uh, loss or many many losses, uh, but at the same time, I'm not sure how effective uh, Russian air defense system is, because we have powerful countermeasures against any kind of systems, and I'm sure you know the option that the military has has developed for President Obama. The first and foremost step is going to be for first you know uh, firing of uh, cruise missiles and then uh, destroying uh, the air defense system. First, we'll destroy the air defense system before we're going to be taking any any um, any action to bomb you know the bases and the airports and so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, yes, because if we were to to succeed in destroying the air defense system, about which I'm I'm absolutely convinced we can't do it without any problem. After that, it'll be a it'll be a uh, it'll be considerably easier for the United States to take further military action. So how how will all this uh, you know this current contention? over the uh, chemical weapons. How do you think it's going to play out? How is it going to affect the ultimate result of this, what amounts to a civil war in Syria? Well, you know, I think I think we have already reached a point where we have we have we have already stated it's too late to have the UN inspection. Very similar to Iraq, yeah. except Obama is not being as irrational as, and rash as as, as uh, uh, George W. Bush was. Uh, but once you start saying that it's too late for that. That, uh, that, that clearly means the United States is, is ready to take military action. But you, but you see, uh, Jay, we have so much, uh, we have transferred so much uh, military assets there. We have four or five uh, uh, warships, we have uh, dozens of airplanes uh, in Jordan, we have a limited amount of troops in, in Jordan uh, ready to go uh, at a moment's notice. So, uh, given all these uh, developments, I see a war is almost or limited limited military action. I don't mean out of war. Uh, limited military action appears to me at this point as pretty pretty strong. Yeah, it sounds like a, a tough situation because if if that happens, uh, then presumably he will be toppled from power. And if he's toppled from power, we we have the black hole. You know, the the vacuum which uh, which uh, Al Qaeda could easily fill. Um, so this does not, not sound like it's um, 
you know, a real positive moment. It sounds like this is leading us down a path that ultimately will will hurt us. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think uh, diminished capacity of, of Bashar al-Assad's regime means that he will, he will definitely go. Uh, it will be more of a uh, matter of when, not if, uh, as it is right now. But, uh, and the most, most uh, uh, troublesome point is what, what will happen after, after Assad. I have a very strong feeling that after Assad it will be, it'll be confusion. It'll be it'll be pretty close to anarchy, and uh, it'll be a whole bunch of uh, ragtag groups uh, fighting each other, killing each other, uh, a lot of civilian uh, casualties, and then of course one one will be wondering what kind of reaction Israel will take, and how far will Israel go in terms of defending itself in the name of quote unquote defending itself. Uh, but any action that Israel would take would further cause chaos and, and uh, enormous amount of bitterness toward, toward the Jewish state. So uh, it's, it's the beginning of a new uh, chapter of anarchy and darkness as I see it. Yeah. Well, let's, let's uh, turn our attention for a moment to uh, Egypt, which yeah. isn't very well off either. Can you update us uh, since the last time we spoke, which was two weeks ago, on the events in Egypt? There's been enormous levels of violence there. The yep. military has made many arrests, um, yep. and there's a lot of uh, unhappiness in the air. Uh, what is happening there? Where is it going? Well, I think, again, that's another big question. But I, I'm pretty sure military will stay in power. You see, the biggest driving force for the, for the Egyptian military is that it has an enormous economic stake. It has a powerful economic stake in the Egyptian economy, and it will do everything to protect it. And one of the biggest things that's, uh, that, uh, that, is, that is going for um, uh, Egyptian army is that we only provide Egypt 1.5 or 1.3 to 1.5 billion dollars worth of military assistance and some economic assistance, whereas Saudi Arabia and the UAE has, has already declared that they're going to provide Egypt with 8, 8 to 8 to 10 billion dollars to replace whatever, you know, to, 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 to take care of whatever needs the Egyptian uh, military has. So you see, given that, uh, Egypt, Egyptian army can just, just uh, uh, very easily uh, tell us to go fly a kite. Uh, so that's why President Obama has been very reluctant. I mean, you know, I really admire President Obama's handling of this issue. He's proving himself to be a very uh, capable, very uh, even keeled uh, president, very pragmatic uh, in terms of avoiding uh, another war. He has learned the lessons from Iraq quagmire quite quite uh, well, and he's thinking deeply. Uh, he has appointed uh, advisors who support his perspective. He's called a reluctant warrior, and he has appointed John Kerry as Secretary of State, who's also who's who's a, who's a Vietnam War veteran, a decorated Vietnam War veteran, and again a guarded, very guarded guy, a reluctant warrior. Uh, uh, Hegel, uh, Secretary, Secretary of Defense, uh, Chuck Hegel, another. Uh, Vietnam decorated Vietnam veteran, another very reluctant warrior. So uh, these people are giving good advice to President Obama, but at the same time we have to keep in mind that Obama's national security advisor uh, Susan Rice uh, is a hawk. His uh, Obama's representative to the to the United Nations, uh, Samantha Power, is another hawk. So he has two hawks and two. Uh, doves uh, giving advice, but of course uh, the bottom line is President Obama himself is not a, is not a hawk. President Obama himself is a reluctant warrior. Mm -hmm. President Obama, what drives him is uh, uh, this reluctance, the pragmatism, and looking at the long uh, view, uh, taking a long view, looking at the long range uh, implications of of declaring declaring war against. Uh, against uh, Syria or Gaza. So, Aisan, where, where is it? Where is it going to go? And you know, given all those factors, given Obama's statements, given you know the aid question from various sources, given the, the, the needs of the military, given the Muslim Brotherhood's reaction and and you know their difficulties with the military, uh, that's an understatement. Uh, you know, so they, where, where is it going to go now? Yeah, you mentioned an Arab awakening. Uh, Arab Spring, so-called, <clears throat> I call it Arab Awakening. One of the biggest outcomes of Arab Awakening is the fact that we have lost our uh, ability to, to, to have much influence. We never control events in the Middle East. Nobody controls events mm. in the Middle East. 
but we we lost our, our ability to, to influence uh, events. We uh, lost our we have we have a diminished capacity to influence manage uh, events. It's because of that that we have to face an, an, an uncertain future. Uh, even if President Obama doesn't start a war in, in Syria, the situation in Syria is not going to get any, any better. Even if President Obama were to <coughs> excuse me con convince the Egyptian army that uh, you know bring back more sea or this or that situation situation is, is not going to get better. You know the the uh, ousting of Mubarak has created enormous amount of division on the polity P O L I T Y of Egypt and uh, uh, Bashar Assad's butcher treatment of, uh, of the insurgents and, and domestic protests has created a, a an almost in, a, in, in a unavoidable, unavoidable a civil war in Syria. So as much as we don't have much capacity to, to even manage the issues, uh, I don't think uh, there, there's much President Obama can do. Yeah. Well, you know, I guess I have two remaining questions to ask you. Physically, as a matter of physical security, where would you rather be? Uh, would you rather be on the streets of Cairo right now, or would you rather be in, uh, you know, in, in Syria? Uh, the, the second question I would pose, and it's related, is both of, both of these countries are in very, very troubled times with a troubled future. Which one troubles you more? I think uh, right now Syria. Because Egypt, Egypt, there's a there's a there's a there is a long shot of opportunity that Egypt will stabilize, because the Egyptian army at least saying that we're going to have democracies uh, in the near future, but in Syria, what's going to happen? Who's who is going to be the next ruler of Syria? Is it going to be an Islamist? Is it going to be a uh, definitely not Alawite, which is a, which is a, uh, you know which is the the, the tribe of uh, Bashar Assad. Uh, if if an Islam, if if even if a Sunni Muslim, moderate Sunni Muslim, were to take uh, take charge, he is not going to last very long because because uh, Syria as a, as a polity, Syria as a society, has been extremely militarized, extremely um, uh, you know uh, volatile. I uh, see. Let's take a look at take a look at the, one of the best case examples of the Arab awakening was Tunisia. Tunisia yesterday, uh, you know, right after one or two years after the, the Arab awakening, Tunisia looked like a very promising place. Today, Tunisia is not uh, a very promising place. So, uh, uh, you ask me where, where where would I be? I say I would be sitting in Riyadh probably. I'll, I'll be a little safe because, <laughs> because 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 Saudis, you know, we haven't even discussed uh, the role of Saudis. Saudis are the warmongers. Saudis very much would want us to attack uh, Syria. Uh, and they're saying for, for, for the sake of democracy or for the sake of whatever, actually for the sake of Islamism, not yeah. for the sake of democracy, because yeah. Saudis uh, could, could care less about, about uh, democracy. Uh, democracy. Yeah. They're very anti-democratic for What about uh, Erdogan in Turkey? Uh, he seems to be trying to take uh, the statesman's role here. Um, is that sincere? Does he really have the capability and support to do that? Uh, can he be a diplomat in these circumstances? Oh yeah, I, I think uh, Erdogan's role is just to uh, support whatever the United States uh, will do. You see, as 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 much of a uh, an important actor Turkey is, uh, Turkey is not a major power. Uh, Turkey is not even a second tier power. Uh, so its capability to participate militarily is only going to be as a, as a, as a in, in a supportive role of, of of the United States. Even Great Britain or France, they have no no military power. They'll be in in in, in the supporting capacity. Now Erdogan has lost a lot of his, a lot of his cloud, a lot of his uh, his influence because of the domestic protests were only a few three three or four months ago. Even before that, I didn't think he could control events. I think he got way ahead of, of uh, the United States in in criticizing Bashar al-Assad. Uh, he had kind of lost track of being a diplomat. Now he's he's kind of laying low. He has said that he'll, he'll follow the U.S. Uh, decision. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm not hopeful about about Turkey at all. Well, I want to thank you so much for this discussion. We're about out of time. I really appreciate your uh, patience and uh, look forward to having this conversation with you again. Always a pleasure, Jay. Just call me anytime you want. We'll be back. I promise you that. Okay. Thanks so much. Uh, that's uh, Isan uh, Harari uh, in, um, uh, what was it, uh, Alexandria, Alexandria, Washington, <laughs> near Washington. And uh, we're talking about West of Asia. And the title question has been Egypt or Syria, which is more troubling. Thank you so much, Isan. Aloha. Aloha.